Adalah sahab, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Waalaikumsalam Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh Jazakallah for joining us and for um, sharing some of your busy schedule and, and, and time to, to grace us with your presence, Alhamdulillah Now for those who don't know uh, Azrit Sahib, uh, there is quite a long biography uh, of Azrit Sahib But uh, inshallah it is only uh, correct for us to you know introduce and, and mention the some some of the backgrounds and so on So nonetheless inshallah Azrit Sahib Muhammad Husseini Ashrafi Al Jilani uh, is from the blessed progeny born into the illustrious fa- uh, Sayyid family from uh, the Ashrafi Khandan and uh, Hazrat Sahib is also the son of Sheikh uh, Tariqat uh, Sayyid Muhammad Jilani Hafidullah the great grandson of uh, Muhaddith Muhaddith Azam Hind the 29th generation of uh, Sayyiduna Sheikh Sayyid Abdul Qadir Al Jilani uh, the 39th generation Aulad of uh, Sayyiduna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Hazrat Sahib also um, obtained his degree in 2005 from uh, Hijaz College in uh, Hunton and a BA, a BA honors degree in, in, in 2008 at the University of Birmingham and Masters in Islamic Studies from the University of, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, is it Glo Glo? Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire, there we go, yes enough. And also, Hazrat uh, is the Khalifa of the Qadri, Chisti, Naqshbandi, Sohrawardi and Ashrafi orders. In 2012, Hazrat uh, took over the responsibilities uh, from his honorable father and Hazrat Sahib is also like I mentioned a world-renowned orator spreading Islam Alhamdulillah so um, now that we know the background of, of our of his eminence Hazrat Sahib that is with us here in studio once again welcome Assalamu alaikum and we also would like to thank the Spiritual Foundation of Cape Town uh, for making this possible for us here this evening and uh, Alhamdulillah uh, we are so fortunate uh, we, we, we in the middle of a sad occasion and a happy occasion uh, the happy occasion is that that we've celebrated the, the Milad of Mustafa sallallahu yes. alayhi wasallam, and we've just come to the end of Rabbi al-Awwal but nonetheless it is another occasion and this is the occasion of the month known as the month of Sheikh Sayyid Abdul Qadir al-Jilani and so this evening we'll be welcoming the month of Sheikh Sayyid Abdul Qadir al-Jilani and I'm going to hand over to Hazrat Sahib and ask Hazrat Sahib uh, inshallah in the time uh, that, that uh, Hazrat Sahib has just to share some of, our, of, of uh, the pearls of wisdoms and advices with us pertaining to uh, Sheikh Sayyid Abdul Qadir al-Jilani inshallah نحمده ونسلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين صدق الله لزيم أنربل برد عبد السلام ماي respected listeners and viewers assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu alhamdulillah this is my second time that i'm here in your beautiful studio and uh, may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you more success Ameen. and baraka in life Ameen. You mentioned whilst you were introducing myself that the biography is quite long and deep. In reality, Brother Abdul Salam, the only introduction that I need and you need is that we are from the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is the greatest blessing and the most authentic introduction because it is his nisbat, it is his connection, it is that love that we have for him defines us in this world, will help us in our grave and will take us to Jannah on the Day of Judgment. Amen. You mentioned about the end of Rabi al-Awwal and the starting of the month of Hazrat Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. Alhamdulillah, we are from Ahlu Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. We celebrate the birth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam throughout the year. And the way we celebrate it is we thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We do shukr that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave us Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and made us from his ummah. 
and this was the teaching and this was the way of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. Throughout his life, he celebrated Mawlid, Milad, and can you see how the month of Rabbil Awwal and Rabbi Uthani are connected? This indicates towards the connection of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani. Hazrat Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani always remained on the footsteps of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He is, I believe, amongst the great signs of our religion. Your name is Abdul Salam. It's a beautiful name. Peace. Peace. And every individual who is watching me, listening to me, is seeking peace. Salam. I need peace. And the interesting aspect of this is that they feel peace is in wealth and authority and big bungalows and a lot of cars and expensive clothes they achieve all of that but in the end realize we have everything but peace that peace and that sukoon is missing within our society and community particularly in the west they have everything they have no peace. Because we are searching for peace where peace is not there. We think peace is in bungalows. Peace is in security. We've got security guards and we've got bungalow. But if you ask Sayyidina Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he will tell you that on the night of Hijra, sleeping on the bed of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam surrounded by enemies that was true peace <coughs> living in a big house and big apartments is that peace? the Sufia and the Awliya mentioned that is not peace true peace was staying with the Prophet in the cave of Saur on the night of Hijrah Sayyidina Abu Bakr would tell you that is true peace. We think earning a lot of money is peace. The Sahaba would say putting all your wealth on the feet of Rasulullah is peace. I belong to the Khanwadi Ashrafiya, the honorable family of Ashrafiya in Keshav Shah Sharif. Hazrat Magdum Ashraf Jahangir Samnani was the former king of Simnan. He left his kingdom at the age of 25 to serve the deen of Rasulullah and through his tabligh converted hundreds and thousands of individuals to Islam. If you ask individuals here today, they think authority is peace. Maghdum Ashraf Jahangir Sandani would tell you that is not peace but leaving the kingdom for the pleasure of Allah and His Messenger وسلم, is peace. Peace is not in wealth and authority and expensive clothes. Peace is in the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Peace is sending darood and salam upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Peace is in loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, following the commands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you do that, no matter which situation you are in, you will remain in peace. Whether you have health, you will have peace. Whether you are sick, you will have peace. Whether you are rich, you will have peace. Whether you are poor, you will have peace. Whether you live in a bungalow, you will have peace. Whether you live in a small hut, you will have peace. This is why all the awliya Allah that we talk about remain peaceful oh, you know, throughout their lives. Why? Because they were close to Allah. They were close to Rasulullah. They continued remembering Allah and remembering Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani had a very tough life, but he was always in peace. Hazrat Data Ganjbaksh Ali Hajwari 
during his journey was in peace hazrat maqdum ashraf jahangir samnani leaving his kingdom remained at peace hazrat khwaja mauddin chishti traveled to ajmer alone but was in peace why remain close to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is why if you want peace in life then remain close to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam salahuddin ayubi was on top of the swords he remained at peace because he was close to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam hazrat imam hussein was beneath the sword but remained at peace because he was close with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is why the sufia and the awliya and the teachings of the likes of sheikh abdul qadir jilani is that to attain all of that adopt the company of those who are close to allah the verse of the holy quran which i had the honor of reciting and we all had the honor of listening to ya ayyuhal ladina amanu ittaqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqin look at the this beautiful verse it's a very small verse and every individual most of us know this by heart and we know the translation but the sufia and the awliya mention if you go deep into this verse this is like an ocean the, the more deep you go the more you discover so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is talking to who believers and these two commands ittaqullah easy translation today do taqwa is a very wide meaning is it's a very has a very deep meaning but you know because we don't have enough time so ittaqullah easy translation is fear allah what what is the meaning of fear pray namaz give zakat follow sharia fear allah wa kunu ma'as sadiqin and adopt the company of those who are truthful as sadiqin the mufassirin mention here sadiqin means salihin and awliya adopt the company of those who are truthful who are close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now the question here is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the believers and is commanding ittaqullah fear allah why is taqwa commanded before suhbah why are we commanded that fear allah and then adopt the company of those who are truthful this question has a very long answer so i just want to summarize it for you for the benefit of the listeners fear allah adopt taqwa because when you pray salah you give zakat you perform hajj you respect your parents and elders and you perform all the duties within sharia that is taqwa with taqwa you earn deeds with taqwa you earn deeds good deeds with sohba you protect those deeds sometimes when you pray a lot of salah there is an i i am a namazi i am a haji <clears throat> i am a qazi i am an alim i and this i can take you away from allah shaitan also said i am better than i that i that ego is a parda is a veil takes you away from allah So when you adopt taqwa and you earn deeds wa kunu ma'as-sadiqin adopt the company of those who will purify you and finish your eye and through the sohba through the companionship you will realize that whatever salah that you prayed or hajj or umrah that you perform or zakat or sadaqa that you gave away it is not i it is the blessing of allah and that protects deeds they finish this is why sohba is important no matter how much knowledge you uh, gain no matter how many deeds you perform until you don't adopt the companionship of those who are close to allah complete purification will not take place every sufi every scholar that we hear about within our history adopted the company of those who were mm-hmm. close to allah and this began from the sahaba who are the sahaba those who remain in the company of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam and the haqiqat the reality of this is the greater your company is the greater you are if you remain amongst believers you will become a believer if you remain amongst awliya you become a wali 
And if you remain with the Prophet, peace be upon him, you become a Sahabi. The greater your company is, the greater you are. And this Sohbah is the essence of the Sohbah. What is Khanqah? When you talk about Khanqah, Qadriya, Khanqah, Chishtiya, Khanqah, Ashrafiya, Khanqah, Razviya, Khanqah, Ba'alaviya, what is, what is a Khanqah? Khanqa is not a name of a dome of, or a minaret. Khanqa is not a name given to beautiful carpets on the floor and a lot of calligraphy on the, on the walls, no. Khanqa is a place where a murid sits with the murshid and purifies himself and becomes like the sheikh. He becomes like his murshid. This is why when people talked about the history of Khanqa, they say the first Khanqa was in Kufa, some said the first Khanqa was in Yemen, some say the first Khanqa was in Iraq, all historians. But if you look with, uh, in, 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 deeply into the meaning of Khanqa, which is where you sit with your murshid, your teacher, your guide, and you purify yourself and you try to become like him, if you understand this meaning of Khanqa, then in reality, the first Khanqa was the cave of Saur. Murid was Abu Bakr Siddiq. Murshid was Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And those three days and three nights, in the cave of Saur, when the Murid Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq annihilated himself in the love of his Murshid, in the adab, in the respect, in the honor of his Murshid to such an extent where he took his nur, and took his attributes within himself to such an extent that when they both arrived in Medina, people were confused. Who is Abu Bakr? Who is Nabi? Because Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq took the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala, took the attributes of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. This is the concept of Khanqa and this is the concept of Tasawwuf. It's not about trying to look like the Shaykh. The intention is you cannot. The intention is that you sit with him and you take the attributes of the Shaykh. When you take the sifat of the Shaykh, automatically your face will be illuminated with the nur of the Shaykh. And this is the reality of tasawwuf. This is the reality of Sufism that, that, that the West calls. Is the closer you are to him and not just in your clothes. This is why, you know, Unfortunately, I travel around around the world and this beautiful path of the Sufiya and the Awliya and this beautiful path of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani that you mentioned, Brother Abdul Salam, that you mentioned. Unfortunately, we have individuals today who are abusing it, misusing it, exploiting it. Maulana Fazl Rahman Ansari once mentioned beautifully, he said, the tragedy of our time is that the Sawwuf, which was the Sunnah and the Seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu has been commercialized today, has been modernized today, has been ritualized today. You know, no one is talking about purification anymore. It's become tradition, it's become new traditions, uh, traditions that are not there in Quran and Sunnah. People are exploiting innocent, gullible followers of Tasawwuf. In the name of Sufi cure, money is being involved, commercialization. Someone goes to a sheikh, please help me. You know, we have cases in the UK for one wazifa, one ta'weez, people are charging hundreds and thousands of pounds. And these individuals are giving bad name to this beautiful path. And it is the duty of the true Sufia to stand up against it and follow the teachings of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. Follow the teachings of Sheikh Junaid Baghdadi, Sheikh Bayezid Bustami, Sheikh Muhyiddin Ibn Arabi, and Sheikh Maghdouma Sheikh Jahangir Samnani, Sheikh Mainuddin Chishti. These were the true foundations of Sufism and follow the Sunnah and the Seerah of Rasulullah People have put so many doubts in the minds of people 
that when someone comes to them, these these uh, these individuals who claim to be Sheikh and Sufi, they have nothing to do with that. Put doubts on people if someone is struggling with finances or strugg- struggling to get married or st- you know struggling with anything in life or someone has done magic on you. That's it, doubt. Anything that he does, something goes wrong, he's going to go back. Playing with the mind. And then using that to gain money and popularity and authority. You know, we, have, we had a case uh, in the UK and it's, it's a quite a surprising one. A youngster came to me and Sheikh, he says, Sheikh, can you uh, check, 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 you know, do some hisab and, you know, check whether someone has done magic on me. I said, no, what's wrong with you, my friend? He said, Sheikh, I'm applying for a job and this is, uh, and I'm not getting a job. This is around the year 2008 and 2009. I said to him, but, you know, is everything okay? He says, no, Sheikh, you have to check. I said, what shall I check? Shall I check your CV? What, what, what are you asking me to check? He says, no, do some hisab and do some check. Someone has done magic on me. Why? He says, because I went to someone else and they told me that someone has done magic on me. I said, Chalo, hai, let me let me check. Because I wanted him to be on the right path. And uh, I called him back and I said, yes, someone has done magic on you. He said, who? I said, the, the name of the magic is recession. No one is getting a job. <laughs> <laughs> Even the sheikh that you went to, is pro- he's also jobless. Right? These doubts, so we told him, and there were other scholars there as well, we told him, I said, look, have patience. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray your salah. And here are certain awrad and wazaif, pray that. And he did that. Alhamdulillah, within a couple of weeks, he had a job. So what is tasawwuf? Yes, dua and ta'wizat are permissible within the boundaries of sharia. But using it to destroy the name of the Sufiya and the Awliya? No. What is the job of a Sheikh? To put you in his sohbah? To take you in his companionship? Not so you become his, his slave. No. The job of a Sheikh is that he holds your hand and takes you closer to Allah. He makes you a true slave of Allah. Through his sohbah. And that is the meaning of true tasawwuf. This sohbat, this companionship that scholars speak about and the importance of that is your companionship will define you. If you stay amongst lions, you become brave. You, you know, I say to a lot of youngsters, you know, adopt a good company. You know, from the hadith of Rasulullah wasallam, and in its overall meaning, the Prophet, peace be upon him, is telling us that a good companionship is, is like going to a perfume shop. You may not buy anything, but at least you'll come out with fragrance. Right? And um, a bad companionship, a company is like going to a blacksmith shop, you know. You may not get anything, but you know, you'll come out with your clothes dirty and clothes burnt. So adopt the company of those who are truthful. You will become truthful. Adopt the company of those who pray salah, you will pray salah. And if you adopt the company of those who, who lie, lying will become your habit. If you adopt the company of those who have drugs, and you will catch that habit. So it's really important that we choose our companionship closely. Because it's important, especially in in. In, in, in the in the era that we are living and particularly you mentioned about the teachings of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. What is Tasawwuf? Tasawwuf, remember, is, you know, I'm wearing this scarf and this is uh, often, you know, um, a lot of the, the Sufiya of the Silsila Chishtiya and Ashrafiya and Nizamiya like to wear this. But wearing this scarf does not make me a Sufi. Wearing a certain color does not make you a Sufi. You know, um, if you are listening to Semar, that, that does not make you a Sufi. Uh, you know, if you think wearing 
brilliant jubba is going to make you sufi and a big turban is going to make you a sufi that is not tasawuf tasawuf is not in your clothes it's not in your turban it's not in the way you dress it's not the way you talk what is tasawuf tasfiyatul qulub wa ittiba'u nabi fi sharia purify your heart and follow rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in sharia hazrat sheikh abdul qadir jilani says he says karamat al wali istiqamat fi'lihi ala qanuni qawl an nabi we think the miracle of a wali is that he's flying in the air and walking on water and he's blowing doing dum here and dum there and that's not sheikh abdul qadir jilani is saying that's not the karamat of a wali the greatest karamat of a wali is that he remains firm on the laws of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he does not cross the boundaries of sharia that is the karamat of a wali now can you see the teachings of the greatest ghaus of his time that is true tasawuf remaining firm on sharia that is tasawuf and we have given it other names and other descriptions and other definitions no tasawuf is about the sunnah and the seerah of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam because remember always remember if you look deep into this verse and i think we've got two minutes um uh, 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 abdul brother abdul salam is smiling here so his smile tells me about the time inshallah we uh, can grant some more verses no no inshallah we, we we will we will but but look at the reality if you look at this this verse is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the believers So first is ya ayyuhal ladina amanu basically those who have iman so iman comes first then what is the command ittaqullah taqwa comes second then what is the command wa kunu ma as-sadiqin sahaba comes later meaning iman is first then your taqwa and then comes ihsan and tasawuf shariat is first tariqat is later shariat is your hai tariqat is your hair style you can have shariat you can have hair without a hair style but you cannot have a hair style without hair you cannot have tariqat without shariat if someone claims that then he's talking about something else and not tasawuf tasawuf is tariqat iman aqeedah shariat and tariqat combined together that is true tasawuf and that is the reality of tasawuf and when you do that then you become a true follower on the path a true salik on the path of tasawuf hazrat sheikh abdul qadir jilani his life was iman taqwa sahaba or iman you know and and worship and and tasawuf that was the life of hazrat sheikh abdul qadir jilani we are celebrating garmi sharif and throughout the month we will be celebrating his life and his 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 um, commands and we will talk about his life and his miracles but trust me follow him study him he was a true example of a sufi a misal a personality who lived his life upon the sunna and the seerah of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam who control he was he was the master of his nafs He remained thankful to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala in every situation. Every situation Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani remained thankful to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact there is one incident and then I'll end my uh, discussion here that Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani was given uh, uh, was given um, a, t- a talk to his followers and disciples an individual came and said in his ear that Sheikh your consignment your product that's coming by a ship and we've heard the news that the the ship has sank and i think what 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 belong to you has been destroyed sheikh abdul qadir jilani closed his eyes looked down and said alhamdulillah the man came back again sheikh it was a false news your ship is fine and it's coming and the consignment the product is all coming sheikh abdul qadir jilani looked down again closed his eyes and he said alhamdulillah the man asked Sheikh in both situation you said alhamdulillah in both news you were thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani said this is the result of purification of the nafs when you control your nafs 
through the suhbah of the awliya, through taqwa and through iman and through the companionship of awliya Allah and those who are close to Allah. When you purify yourself, you do taskiyah, you do purification and you control your nafs, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalali said, when you gave me the news, the first news, which was the bad news, I looked down and I saw my nafs. My nafs was not too disappointed. I said, Alhamdulillah. And when you gave me the good news, I looked again. And the nafs was not too excited. I said, Alhamdulillah. And in both news, my nafs within myself, I remain thankful to Allah. This is tasawwuf. This is the path of the awliya. And this is the teachings of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani. That in whichever situation you are, whether you are sick, whether you have health, whether you are poor, whether you have wealth, whether you live in a bungalow, whether you live in a hut, whether you have issues, whether you have uh, difficulties, whether you have easiness, no matter which situation you are in, you should remain thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is tasawwuf. That is the reality of tasawwuf that we are talking about today. And if you can follow that, then that is the true teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept my presence here today and accept uh, your presence here today and allow us to walk on the path of tasawwuf, the true path of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani. Wa akhiru da'wana. Anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.